How we use our money is the clearest outside indicator of what we really believe. If someone is a true disciple of Jesus Christ, the evidence will be found in that person's everyday life, including his or her use of money. When we surrender every area of our lives, including our finances to God, then we are free to trust Him to meet our needs. But if we would rather hold tightly to those things that we possess, then we find ourselves in bondage to those very things. My greatest fear in life is standing before the Lord and hearing Him say, I had so much more for you, but you held on too tightly. If you'll do now what other people won't, you'll do later what other people can't. The one principle that surrounds everything else is that of stewardship, that we are the managers of everything that God has given us. Money is either the best or the worst area of communication in our marriages. You cannot be spiritually free and financially bound. The black family unit that had survived 150 years of slavery was decimated in less than 30 years by welfare payments that stopped if the family structure remained intact. Get-rich-quick thinking leads to three basic errors. 1. Getting involved with things you cannot understand. 2. Risking funds you cannot afford to lose that is, borrowed funds. 3. Making hasty decisions. Each of these actions violates one or more biblical principles together they constitute a sin called greed. What does impress both the unsaved and saved alike are those rare individuals who have learned to control their lifestyles and use the abundance they have to help others and spread God's word. Let me propose a radical idea from God's word, determine God's best for your life, and be satisfied with it, even if it means moving down in lifestyle. Most entrepreneurial types are freewheelers who like to do a variety of things and do not enjoy routine tasks. But a smart entrepreneur will eventually learn that while ideas start businesses, organization makes them successful. It is amazing to me that we allow so many people with so little proven character to set our national policy on issues that will ultimately be paid for by the rest of us. Few Christians understand the concept of eternal rewards, even thought the Lord dedicated a great deal of his precious time on earth to teaching about them. The one certainty is that our position in the Lord's kingdom will be inversely proportional to how we indulge ourselves in this lifetime. In business, organization is an absolute necessity, not an alternative. Always be ready to give a good testimony for the Lord, but remember that the best testimony a Christian can have is a love for others and good work habits. Satan's number one weapon is pride. God's number one defense is humility. A wise man seeks much counsel, a fool listens to all of it. When you don't know what the answer is, you know who the answer is. The measure of true giving is to share with someone who has no platform from which to speak and may never benefit us in any way. After all, isn't that what true love is all about? The cheapest car anyone can ever own is always the car they presently own. There is one primary purpose of a Christian's business, to serve God. 
The average Christian pays more in interest than he gives to the Lord's work. In a church of 100 families 37 will give nothing.